do. I don't know that I'm going to put that in there. Um, and then these pairs, you can really see the shape where the shadow and the light and stuff, you can really see. So I think having just some fruit, if you want to do it with the older kids, have them do fruit. Or you can, if you feel confident, you can try to teach them how to draw a sphere. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do with my kids because um, I think that will be easier for me than trying to have them draw fruit. I agree. So. Um, I think they like the black paper too. Yeah. And, and with chalk, it's a lot faster than trying to draw it in pencil. It took me, I think it took me about three minutes to do the chalk one, which um, I know how to draw, so that's obviously going to be, you know, but 10 minutes they should have to be fine instead of the 30 minutes it took me to get the other stuff cleaned up. Um, and all my note cards. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I know I had some notes here. So, um, so you'll show the circle, and I'll have, um, I'm going to put my circle I just drew, I'll put a little sun light source here, I'll put this in a clear plastic cover and, and clean it up with an eraser and stuff so that um, the kids can see the difference between these two. Um, so, let's see, so the shadow basically gives depth to the drawing. You'll, it defines the shape and gives depth to the drawing. Um, and then, then they suggest that they, you show the drawings of fruit at this point so they can see how that sphere compares to. And I think this, the pairs are great for that, um, to just kind of get an idea of, of the shadow there. Um, so when you look at the light on, say, even... So you look at the light here. Um, oh, no, this experiment. Oh, this is fun. So what you'll do is, is um, turn the lights back off, so the lights are off and on during the whole lesson. Turn the lights back off and have the teacher come sit in the chair in the front of the room. So, so you'll have the lights on and you'll say, okay, so if you're going to draw a picture of your teacher, if you're going to draw her, um, what would be more interesting to have the lights like this and then you turn it off and then you have a flashlight pointed at her. So you'll see more contour to the face. You'll see bright <coughs> spots and you'll see definition. You'll see shadow under the chin. Um, teachers aren't going to want the light down here because it's going to make them look older. You want to make sure that the light's coming from up here. At least from my experience. I'd rather have it look more blurry. And so you'll ask the kids, what, so which one's more interesting? And of course having the light off. Um, so, so now I'm going to show you um, that this the artist that we're going to talk about today used this technique of focusing light, having it dark and focusing light on a face to make a portrait look more interesting. And so you can tell them, so who knows what a portrait is? Does anybody know what a portrait is? A uh, picture of a person up close. picture of a person up close. And sometimes your family would have a portrait, family portrait. This is our picture, that we're, the, the painting that we're going to talk about today. So you can see... It's dark all the way around, and that there's the light. And can you tell me, where do you think the light is pointing? Where do you think it's coming from? And yes, there's this very white spot right on his forehead that shows you exactly. And then, so as you're looking at the light, as it gets further away from this spot, what happens to the light? Yeah, you'll, you, as it goes away, it lessens, right? You get the shadow, and that's what it's called diffuses. The light diffuses, and most of the kids aren't going to have heard that term, um, but it diffuses, and it kind of spreads out, and you'll see a little bit of light in the hair and the face, but then you've got shadow, right? So the painter that did this painting, it was Gilbert Stewart, Gilbert Charles Stewart. And there's this picture of him. Um, he, let's see, let me make sure I'm not leaving anything out, sorry. If I haven't taught the lesson seven times, I'm not sure what I'm leaving out. Um, so where, so the, where do we get the most concentrated, so actually we already talked about that. The forehead, they want you to concentrate on the forehead, um, because of the, the way it looks. You're going to compare it to the Pfeiffer. So you'll bring the Pfeiffer painting out and look at the contours on the Pfeiffer face. There really aren't in it. It doesn't look very round. There's not any highlights really on the Pfeiffer's face. And compared to this, and it shows, you really can see the difference in um, light and shadow and how it makes something look round or, or uh, you know, 
where, where it's con concentrated. Um, so uh, Gilbert Stewart was a master of this art, this uh, painting with light and uh, shadow and portraiture. Um, and he did this to make the paintings, his portraits, look a lot more dramatic. If you just, if you look at the Pfeiffer's face, it's not a dramatic look, but if you look at this because of the way, because of the shading and because the background is totally blah and the, and you know, you really don't have much focus on anything, you know, the face is where you really concentrate. Um, and you can actually have the kids close their eyes and then look at it and say, okay, what, what are you drawn to? And then clearly they're going to look straight at the face. But that's a lot of time spent talking on that, so you can skip over that if you want to. Um, so so um, they wanted you to point out that usually the viewers don't look at his coat or his um, or this. They don't usually look at that first. And so um, does anybody know what this is? Does anybody know what that's called? Is it a ruffle? The ruffle there? It's actually called a jabot. Jabot. Yeah, it's either jabo or jabo. It's J-A-B-O-T is how it's spelled, which we just talked about Monet and so how the tea is silent, it's French. So um, jabot. Um, and so if you were, if you were, do you know any important men that would have their portrait taken um, with one of those today? And so that basically... People don't wear those anymore. Um, what would they wear? What would a man today wear instead? A tie. A tie. Uh, why do you think George Washington, in all of his portraits, always had one on? Are you getting creative with that? Just hold it still, dude. It's I love it. Oh, you can hold it. You can have it rest on both of your knees. That's fine. Um. So, but basically, that was the style of the day. And if you go back, um. Gilbert Stewart actually painted four other presidents. Jefferson was one of them. He had, did a lot of portraits, um, and they all were wearing those ruffles and of different kinds. What I didn't realize is that um, uh, he actually painted 130 portraits of Washington. So there are tons of these. So similar to Monet, when Monet took it at different times of day. No, so actually what happened is he, um, he only sat for him three times. And I believe it was for one painting. He just came and sat for this one painting. And the painting that he, that he did when Washington was sitting there uh, posing for him was never finished. He actually never finished the painting. It, it, it's actually in the Smithsonian, I believe. But there's a whole chunk of white. Like it, You see there's like an L shape of where it's not finished. But the face is finished. And so he took that, and then he got really, really good at painting his face after that. So he just reproduced. In fact, he had 12 kids and he had a few daughters that were artists and they helped him. So not all 130 were painted exclusively by him. His daughters actually got pretty good at it. At one point he could paint a portrait of George Washington in about two hours because he was just so used to the contours of face. But they do look really different. So I, I um, printed out some of the examples of his portraits. So this one is another portrait. It's very similar in his eyes. If you go, all the pit portraits, he doesn't have a smile on his face in any of them. And some of them say, oh yeah, they didn't smile during pit portraits. And I was like, well, it's not like photography where you didn't smile because it would like blur. But they, yeah, it was, had a little bit to do with maybe dignity because he was, a, you know, the president of the United States. But more than anything, what the, the, um, they're guessing is that he, because he had horrible teeth, when he was inaugurated, he only had one tooth of his own in his head, one by Cuspid. So he did not, they actually think that there was cotton in his mouth when he did this um, portrait to keep his lips, there, somebody was saying that they, that was conjecture, that there was cotton holding his lips out. But he had um, dentures made, and apparently the guy that made the dentures had his last tooth on his keychain. <laughs> like he... He was like, oh, this is Washington's last tooth, and he turned it into a key fob. But it is, that tooth is in the Smithsonian as well, I believe. Um, but it was hard to get him to smile. It wasn't just his teeth. His teeth were bad. <coughs> his teeth were, the dentures were made out of, like, whale bone and, or whale, what was it, walrus and, and whale, but walrus Tusk. tusks and stuff. So, um, so, 
he had a few different sets of dentures that he used, um, but it was hard to get him to smile. And sit in the corner. Um, yes, though. I bet you're loud. Oh, he's having a hotel. Oh. How perfect. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what uh, Stuart found is that he couldn't get him to smile, he couldn't get him to like warm up. And Stuart was a pretty charming guy, and so he could usually get his subjects to like, you know, be at ease, and he couldn't. And what, and during one of those three sessions, he noticed that when Washington was looking out the window, he saw a horse and it made him smile. And he loved, loved horses. So if he would talk to him about horses, then he would, he would relax. So that was the only thing that would get him to relax. So here's one painting. This one is really different. If you can, if you can put it on the projector so they can see, it is. He's his face is much longer. It's way more defined. It's actually. It almost looks like it's outlined in places. His cheeks are really rosy. His cheeks are really rosy, but his you can see like his face yeah. is much more elongated in that picture. This one is a fame. Another famous one, the Lansdowne um, print, and I I actually ordered this one in large. So I've ordered a second print. Um, I was, I've been trying to get money to do this from, from the PTA and they've agreed. So I'm getting a second print for 